In this video, we're going to talk about properties and how to set them. So I'm going to go ahead and continue using the web page that I started in the last video and um, use these uh, multi-tag sets to show how we can set some properties. So uh, you can go ahead and start with this or you can use another, you know, you can watch along and then try some, some of these different things yourself. So let's go ahead and start with our uh, ordered lists. First, let's remember what a property is. Uh, if you recall, we have looked at one example of a property so far, and that is here in our um, HTML tag. We added this property, lang, and we put in the value, E-N-U-S, meaning English, and specifically U.S. English. A property is basically a variable that we can set to a certain value, and different tags have different allowable properties, different allowable variables that you can set to cause them to um, format in a different way. And the ordered lists are a really good example. They have different types. But if we were to put in this property, type equals A, then it should switch us over to ABC. We can also put in some other values. We can use lowercase i to get lower, lowercase Roman numerals. We can use uh, uppercase alphabet, and we can use uppercase Roman, okay? So it's just a matter of putting in, and again, notice I'm putting in um, the first value in, in whatever, um, whatever set, whatever type I'd like to use, I'm putting in the first value. Notice too the formatting here, and I'll reload this as well. Notice the formatting. When you're, when you're uh, coding for a property, it's the name of the property, an equal sign, and then whatever that value is, is in quotation marks, because that's basically the direct information that you're passing along to the browser. So it's understanding that, th that this is the value of that particular variable that goes along with that tag. Okay, so um, you get the type in the OL, uh, in the UL, we have some different kinds of types. So if we put type square there, then these are going to change to little square bullets instead of the, um, the round filled in bullets. I'm going to leave it to you to see what other types there are for UL. Now, another thing I want to show you is you can have more than one property assigned in a specific tag. So here, Let's just say we want to continue a list from another part of the page. So we want to start that value higher than just at one, which is of course the default is to start at one. So if we started at 10 and I happen to still be in Roman numerals, we get 10, 11, 12 in our Roman and we could go back to um, letters if we wish and it'll start at J in that case or we could just go back to our normal numbering system and you can see 10, 11, 12. Okay, so again, just take, to take a look at the um, way this is coded, if you have multiple properties, you do the first property, you give it its value, space, no punctuation, just a space, and then second property, equal sign, quotation marks, give it its value. It does not matter what order the properties are listed in within this framework, you just have to make sure it's within the angle brackets of the tag. So that's the key thing there. Okay, now, um, for our table, there's lots of different things we can do. Setting the border of a table equal to one will turn on the grid lines. It's just an on-off switch. It's not like setting pixel width or anything, anything else like that. Uh, so it just allows us to see that table a little more easily. Now, the, really, that's not, the, that's not the, the right way to do it. You really should do it with CSS and to deal with your, um, you know, the formatting and styling and the look of your table. This is just to give you an example of using properties within that table space. However, another thing that I can show you with, with the table is take a look here, right? Our last line, we have just one value and we have um, three cells. Let's say we wanted to merge across and just, just put something in that last uh, cell of the table that, you know, was some other statement that should go, should span across all of those, right? Like, you know, next batch of people. 
you know, it's a different, it's a section that, that needs to go together, right? So if we did it this way, okay, we could just take out that one, right? And then, okay, so now I've just got the one there. Surely it's smart enough. Well, no, computers are stupid. It's gonna keep it in that first cell, um, but we want this really to expand across, right? So what we can do is add a property to help us with that. Call span equals three. And again, notice I put that in uh, quotation marks and I will bring it on over here so you can see it, right? Call span equals three. And now it does what we're expecting it to do, what we would like for it to do. And that is to keep going and make this just one cell, even though there are three cells here. There's also, of course, row span, and we could use that to um, have, a, have a cell that spans multiple rows. Let's say if we did uh, this one. And then in the row below, we would take away one of those individual cells. So now this one only has two where the other one has three. And then that should um, create our nice row span. So now we know John Smith has these two different addresses. Okay. So that's how we can use properties. And in particular, I'm showing you in these multi-tag sets because properties can be really helpful, particularly with this type of coding. But you can use properties all over the place. Uh, and I think I mentioned in, a, in another video that there's a, a property called class that's a universal property that can go in just about any um, any HTML tag that's in the body. And we will talk about class in a bit because that one goes along with CSS. But in the meantime, um, play around with your properties, whether in your multi-tag sets or not. And it, where do you go to look for what properties go along with what tags? Check the specification, check the tutorials.